You're a business owner. Check. You have business owner's insurance. Check. And 10 years ago, that went about enough. Today, small businesses are being targeted and taken down by hackers. Medical offices, consultants, CPAs, any business that's built success has everything to lose. You probably have cybersecurity installed on your computer. Check. But you probably don't have cyber insurance. Coverage against loss and damage if your data is compromised. Cyber policy covers that gap. CyberPolicy.com shops the leading cyber insurers to find you the right policy at the right price to avoid a catastrophe. Coverage against loss and damage if your data is compromised. Get a custom quote today in just four minutes. And for a limited time, use the promo code BLOGTALK to get Norton's small business protection for up to five devices. Free when you sign up for cyber insurance. Plan. Prevent. Insure. Visit cyberpolicy.com. That's cyberpolicy.com. Blog Talk Radio. Hi, this is Jeff Alton, the Big Game Hunter, and welcome to No BS Hiring Advice Radio on Blog Talk Radio. This is a time where I like to spend about 15 minutes talking with you about some element of hiring, staffing, recruiting, employment bringing people on board, targeted toward HR professionals, hiring managers, small business owners, you know, people who are at the vanguard of trying to hire. Because for many of you, it's become very painful to go through all these resumes and interview all these people and, you know, go through the motions of trying to find staff, and it's harder than it needs to be. Now, today's show is brought to you by Well, my first sponsor is ConsultingAssignments.com. That's a site where you can find and fill consulting assignments, full-time consulting positions, temp temp to perm, contract to hire opportunities anywhere in the world, completely free. Posting a job or a resume is free. Searching jobs and resumes is also free. Uh, The ability to contact one another, there's no impediment. Um, The only thing the site charges for is if you want to feature a job or a resume, it's a whopping $10 for 30 days. And if you're going to feature more than one position, they have prices that – they have uh, programs, I should say, that take the cost down to as little as $2 for 45 days. My second sponsor is Audible. Uh, Audible uh, provides audio books uh, to to listen to uh, at different times where – you just can't sit there and read your Kindle or read a book. Um, they have a program at audibletrial.com forward slash the big game hunter. Again, audibletrial.com forward slash the big game hunter, where you'll be able to download a free uh, book of your choice to listen to uh, when you sign up for a 30 day trial. Again, audibletrial.com forward slash the Big Game Hunter. Now, I, I have a show in mind for you today called The Myth of the Passive Job Applicant. And let me define what the problem is here. Most of you believe that passive job applicants are superior to the active job applicant. After all, as the story goes, The passive job applicant is the one who's working in their job. They've got their heads down. They're an achiever. They're doing extremely well. Everyone loves them. They're just focused on doing their job. And as a result, they would never see your ad on the web or in a local paper because they're so busy doing what they want to do. The active one is the one that has their resume out and about everywhere. And you know, I'll state my own contribution to the myth and understand I've been in the search business for more than 40 years. And in the course of my time here, uh, what I've seen is that we've progressed from people responding to newspaper ads, to faxing resumes, to finding resumes on job boards and on LinkedIn and a host of other places. But the myth still is perpetuated. And I'd like to poke some holes in the myth for you, if I may. Now, first of all, even if the next thing I said isn't true, this one is. And that is, people have lost their jobs or are actively looking for work, mostly 
not because they're comp uh, incompetent, but primarily because economic circumstances for their firm or for their industry uh, have forced the organization to, to cut heads. But they cut the weakest person, right? No. Sometimes an entire function is, is cut away because the firm just can't perform uh, perform the service any longer. They've decided to outsource it. The sourcing, the outsourcing firm already has enough people in place. Goodbye. Nice knowing you. It's done it much more kindly than that, but it's not an issue of incompetence for most of these people. Some it is, no question about it. But to, to have the blanket statement that the person who's aggressively looking for work is less competent than the person who's actively performing their job you know, is as big a generality that's prone to mistake and bias than any other that you might hear. Now, here's the real story. And understand, again, I've been in the recruiting business for more than 40 years. Years ago, back in the Stone Ages, when I started my first business, I helped to create the myth. And here's what, why I did it. In those days, I was an undercapitalized business. And I was staring at New York Times ads, because I was in New York, and the New York Times was the vehicle of choice for advertising in those days. And you'd stare at the Sunday New York Times, and they had two areas where employment classifieds existed. There was the traditional classifieds and the financial sections. And I would stare at these huge ads that would cost thousands of dollars to advertise for one day in one section. So, for example, a 50-line ad, which would be a 50 to 100-line ad that might be at the top of the page in the classifieds, might cost back in the early 1970s about seven, eight, a thousand dollars. I didn't have the capital, and the financial section would cost even more. So, I started to think of what I could do to compete what I can do to put myself in a position where I could stand out from the pack. So I know I was one of a number of people who started the myth, who said basically that I go out and recruit. I find people who aren't actively looking for work because I try to find the best person looking for, uh, who's qualified to do this job, not just the best person who reads the New York Times on a Sunday. Pretty dramatic response, right? But the fact is, as we look at modern times, it's no longer about who reads a newspaper. It's about a job board or LinkedIn or something. And I want to poke holes in the myth yet again. Now, you may get a referral of an individual at your office, and that person is referred to you by someone you really know and trust who says, I've got this person, he'd be terrific for this group. And the fact is, I believe this person could do this job uh, and would be a tremendous asset. You've got to talk to him. Great, you got an employee referral. That's what you want, right? And you know, right off the bat, you're thinking passive job applicant because it's a referral. But how do you know this person doesn't have their resume on 15 job boards right now? How do you know that this person doesn't have their resume on a job board and their name isn't there? They have a blind ad, a blind resume. A blind resume is one of those that. You know, for example, on Monster, it's going to have like 15 letters and numbers at monster.com. How do you know their resume isn't there and just blinded? You don't. How do you know this person isn't doing a quiet but aggressive job search, contacting their, their A network, their, their closest friends, and looking for help? Or a friend of a friend has put this employee of yours up to this person, and this is an active job hunter. Answer, you don't. All you know is that you got an employee referral, and thus, this is an, a passive job applicant. 
An employment agency presents a person to you. What makes that person an individual, uh, as an individual, less competent than the employee referral? I can't figure it out at this point. It's not about skills. It's about the source of the referral that's caused you to evaluate one person as being superior to another without evaluating their skills. When you think about it, does that really make a lot of sense? Because it sure doesn't to me. Ultimately, you have to make skills-based decisions, not source-based decisions. Now, obviously, the employee referral may cost less than the employment agency referral. You know, it may be somewhere in the middle between um, you know, a, a job board response, uh, may be somewhere in the middle between the two. But to suddenly decide that one person is superior to another purely on the basis of what the, the referral source is without taking the time to evaluate skills is ridiculous. Think about it. You don't know anything about them other than the fact that one person referred them. Or you source them on LinkedIn. Oh, this is my favorite one. So you go sourcing on LinkedIn. You've got a LinkedIn recruiter account, and you're out there recruiting and reaching out to people and networking and talking to folks, and someone who is a perfect fit for your job responds to one of your in-mails. Great! You've gotten a passive applicant. You reached out to them. And how do you know they don't have their resume on four job boards and with 15 employment agencies? You don't. All you know is that you found that profile on LinkedIn, reached out to them, and determined that they were interested in what you had to propose. That's all you know. They are not superior because you reached out to them. They're not superior because you reached out to them versus found them on a job board, saw that they were unemployed. Oh, that's the other great sin, that someone's unemployed. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. All you know is they responded to your in-mail. You don't really know if they're more qualified or less qualified than the, quote, active job applicant. Now, the unemployed versus the employed. Like I said earlier, for years, your firm and probably and many others were laying people off in the United States and in many places in the world. Layoffs are going on today, and I'm doing this in 2014, and I've reactivated one of my sites, the Job Market Blog, uh, to track layoff notices and some hiring that's going on around the world. There are still layoffs going on throughout the world. And the fact that someone has gotten laid off basically just means that most organizations are not able to perform a function any longer and thus have cut everyone in that department. There are exceptions, like I said earlier, but when all is said and done, you know, that someone is out of work doesn't mean that they're incompetent. Often, they may have just gotten caught in one of these things. So, to summarize, passive job applicants may actually be active job applicants. All you know is what the source is of the referral. And that source does not make one candidate superior or inferior to another. When all is said and done, what you know is what you know. And you have to qualify these folks to determine whether or not they're skilled enough to do the job that you need done. So, that's my, my advice for this show. Now, I know you're uh, someone who likes audio because you're listening to this podcast. And I want to encourage you, come over to audibletrial.com forward slash The Big Game Hunter and sign up and receive a free download uh, of an audio book of your choice. I also want to say I've got lots of content at my website, which is TheBigGameHunter.us. So come over to the site and go exploring. Lots of stuff to help you with staffing, or if you're looking for work, there's plenty of information there as well, videos, podcasts, 
um, articles I've written for No BS Hiring Advice Easing and No BS Job Search Advice Easing. You can also receive a complimentary subscription to both of them uh, at TheBigGameHunter.us. I also want to mention I'd love to help your firm with staffing. So send me an email at Jeff Altman at TheBigGameHunter.us. Let's set up a time to speak. I'd love to help your firm staff positions. If we're not already connected on LinkedIn, send me a connection request. My address is linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash The Big Game Hunter. I accept connection requests from people worldwide, except if you're a third-party recruiter or your profile looks like a spammer. I won't accept it then. And finally, finally, I hope you have a great day. And I hope you come back next time for more No BS Hiring Advice. This is Jeff Altman, The Big Game Hunter. Hope you have a great day. Take care. Right now at Gap Factory and Banana Republic Factory, save 50 to 70% off everything in stores and online. That's right, 50 to 70% off everything. Celebrate the 4th with dresses from $19.99 at Banana Republic Factory. And at Gap Factory stores, tees start at $4.99. Plus, save an extra 40% off clearance. Sale in Tuesday. Search our store locator for your nearest Gap Factory and Banana Republic Factory store or shop us online. Right now at Gap Factory and Banana Republic Factory, save 50 to 70% off everything in stores and online. That's right, 50 to 70% off everything. Celebrate the 4th with dresses from $19.99 at Banana Republic Factory. And at Gap Factory stores, tees start at $4.99. Plus, save an extra 40% off clearance. Sale in Tuesday. Search our store locator for your nearest Gap Factory and Banana Republic Factory store or shop us online.